Now we want to see what happens to k when we change things about our equation. And we'll start with uh, what happens when we change the direction of the reaction. Well, here we've got the equation that we looked at earlier, N2O4 in equilibrium with NO2. And as we talked about earlier, uh, that ratio uh, comes out to 0.212. So that's our equilibrium constant as 0.212. Well, if we change the direction of the reaction, then our equilibrium expression will be the reciprocal, and our equilibrium constant will also be the reciprocal. And so the 0.1 over 0.212 will give us 4.72. So if we change the direction of the reaction, we take the reciprocal uh, to get our value for Kc. Now, if, uh, if we multiply the coefficients of an equilibrium equation by a number, we simply raise that original equilibrium constant to that power. So again, here is our example for NO N2O4 in equilibrium with 2NO2. If we change the coefficients for these to twice the original amount, so here we have doubled the coefficients by doubling the coefficients, We'll also, uh, we're going to square the value of our equilibrium constant. So in this case, the 0.212 squared will come out to 0 0.0449. All right, well, uh, if we add two equilibrium equations together, uh, the equilibrium constant of the resulting equation is the product of the two component constants. Here is an example. So here we've got 2NOBR in equilibrium with 2NO and BR2. And I've written KC1 to indicate that this is our first equation um, in, this, uh, in this series. So 0 0.014 is the value of that equilibrium constant. Here I've got a second equation, so Br2 uh, plus uh, uh, Cl2 is in equilibrium with 2BrCl. It has an equilibrium constant of 7.2. Well, if we add these two equations together, you will see that the Br2 cancels out, and we will get 2NOBr plus Cl2 gives us 2NO plus Br2 plus BRCL. And again, the BR2 cancels out. Well, since this is simply the sum of these two equations, then we're going to take the product of those two equilibrium constants. So we'll take 0.014 times 7.2. And when we multiply that, we will get uh, 0.10 as the value for our equilibrium constant. So we want to look at uh, we want to look at these equilibrium uh, problems numbers 19, 21, and 23. So we'll switch over to our in-class assignment again. So N2NO plus BR2 gives us 2NOBR. All right, so this one is uh, uh, interestingly very similar to what we were just looking at, but so here we've got uh, 2NO plus BR2 gives us 2NOBR. The KC for this is 1.3 times 10 to the negative 2 at this temperature. We want to calculate the value of KC if we do this. 2NOBR is in equilibrium with 2NO and BR2. Well, you can see that we simply changed the direction of the reaction. So that means Kc is simply going to be the reciprocal. So it'll be 1 over 1.3 times 10 to the negative 2. All right, so now we'll punch those numbers into the calculator. So 1.3 times 10 to the negative 2. And I'm just going to use the... Uh, x to the minus 1, meaning I'm going to take the reciprocal, and the value that we get there is 70 
seven. We'll round that to two significant figures. So 77. So we want to answer the question at this temperature, does the reaction favor NO or Br, NO and Br2 or does it favor NOBr? Well, if we go back and look at the original equation, let's just ignore what we wrote in A. Uh, we look at the original equation and 1.3 times 10 to the negative 2, since that's smaller than 1, that tells us that this reaction was reactant favored. So 2NO and Br2. Now, interestingly, if we look at the second equation, 2NOBr plus, or is in equilibrium with 2NO plus Br2, it had an equilibrium constant greater than 1, so therefore it would be product favored, which is also 2NO plus Br2. So we will find that the equilibrium will favor the NO and the Br2. All right. So now let's look at number 21 on the in-class assignment. So here we've got at 1,000 Kelvin, some, some pretty toasty temperatures here. At 1,000 Kelvin, Kp is equal to 1.85 for this reaction. So SO2 plus 1 half O2 gives us SO3. Well, the value for uh, let's write the value for Kp for this. Well, you can see all we did was turn it around. So that means that we will take the reciprocal. So Kp is going to be equal to 1 over 1.85. So 1.85 raised to the negative 1 gives us 0 0.541, we have three sig figs, so we'll put 0 0.541 is our equilibrium constant there. Well, now we want to see what is the value for Kp in this reaction. And you'll notice here that the coefficients are 1, 1 half, and 1. And here the coefficients are 2, 1, and 2. So we doubled the value of the coefficients, and so now we want to square the value to get Kp. So Kp is going to be equal to 1.85 squared. So 1.85, and we'll write squared. And that comes out to 3.42. All right, so next, uh, next we want to see what is the value of Kc for the reaction in part B. Well, the relationship between Kp and Kc is this. Kp is equal to Kc times Rt to the delta N, where delta N is the number of moles of gaseous product minus the number of moles of gaseous reactant. In this case, we've got two moles of gaseous product and two plus one, so three moles of gaseous reactant. So in this case, delta N is equal to negative one. So now we just want to solve this for Kc. So Kc is equal to Kp over Rt to the delta N. So Kp over Rt to the negative 1. And so now we'll put the numbers in. So for Kp, uh, it was 3.42. R is 0 0.0821, that's the liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. Our temperature was 1000 Kelvin. And then here we'll put to the negative one value. And so now we're ready uh, to calculate the value of Kc. So 3.42 uh, divided by parentheses 0 0.0821 times 1,000, close parentheses, and then uh, we're going to raise that to the negative 1. All right, and the value that we get there is 280.8. 
Uh, we have three sig figs, so we will call that 281. So 281. All right, so now on to number 23. And with 23 here, we've got the following equilibrium constants were determined at this temperature, 8, 823 Kelvin. So here we've got, here we've got, uh, uh, we've got this cobalt oxide solid plus H2 gas gives us CO solid plus H2O gas. Equilibrium constant here comes out to 67. And then here we've got another equation. So uh, the cobalt oxide uh, plus the carbon monoxide is an equilibrium with cobalt and carbon dioxide. And that has an equilibrium constant of 490. And now we want to figure out what Kc is for the following equation. Well, in order to get add these two equations together to get the following equation we just want to find h2 so h2 is right here so if we write it exactly like it is with an equilibrium constant of kc uh, of, of 67 and then uh, to get co2 well co2 is in the second equation and it's on the wrong side so we need to change the direction which i've done here and when we change the direction that means that our equilibrium constant Kc is going to be 1 over 490. That'll be our Kc value there. So now we can add these two equations together. Uh, all of these solids are going to cancel out and we're going to end up with H2 gas plus CO2 gas. And that's an equilibrium with CO gas plus H2O gas. And that the equilibrium constant for this is going to be equal to uh, 67 times, and our equilibrium constant here was 1 over 490. So we'll do 67 divided by 490. And then that's going to give us, let's see, we've got two significant figures there, so we will call that 0 0.14 as our equilibrium constant.